Good morning, good morning, good morning. I will welcome you all. Thank you, Tori, for coming back and bringing your children. Y'all come again now. You're welcome. And then we're going to have a welcome prayer by Miss Stella. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for a wonderful morning. Thank you for the privilege that you give me to be on the house of the Lord this morning. Thank you for allowing me to touch this pulpit, God. God, I know where is God, there is a liberty. Thank you for wonderful family that attend this church this morning. And for those who are on, this, on, uh, on the way to be at church, God, we ask you to protect them as they drive coming toward this place. God, I cover this place with the power of the Holy Spirit. Everything that is going to happen today, God, let it be for your glory, God. God, we ask you to meet our need today. Because where is God as a liberty? God, we ask the presence of your God to dwell on this place this morning. As we continue with our service today, we give you honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Minister. Stella. Amen. Now we're going in, the, uh, in our praise and worship with our children. Come on, children. Y'all don't come back. Y'all next sing.
you, children, for that wonderful song, Praise and Worship. We're going back into the praise and worship. We're going into it at dusk. Give us 
your Holy Spirit We can't do nothing Until you come, dear Lord For we are so worthy To call out your name So please, 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 please Lord, hear our prayer And don't let you come in Be in vain Oh Lord We need your spirit Your Holy Spirit Right now Oh
Come back. Offering. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you for everybody coming in this morning. And bless this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Ways to give. Online, catchonfireministries.org. Zell. What is this other one? C-O-F-M-1013 <laughs> at Pro... Protomail.com. Offering scriptures, Second Corinthians 9, 6, 7. Remember this, whoever sows sparely will also reap sparely, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what, what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves and cheerful giver. 
it's prayer time. We're, we're like each and every one to come to the altar around the altar for prayer. And Miss uh, Minister Stella is gonna lead us in a prayer. So let's go and pray. Thank you, Father in heaven, for this wonderful, precious time. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be at this pulpit at this moment. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for dwell in this pleasant God. God, we don't have anywhere to go for our peace of our mind. But God, this is a place where we receive peace of our mind, God. If you are in our side, God, we have a joy that nobody can give us except you, God Almighty. Thank you for these children that they are here today. Thank you, Jesus, because their time, they dedicate their time to be here, God. They could choose to be home and play video game. They could be home and do whatever is not pleasing you, God. For this little time they give you, God, honor them by, by uh, give their need, the inner need that they didn't even mention over here, God. Some of us, God, sometimes we don't see any love from the family we come from. But God, you are the father of the fatherless. Thank you, God, because you are never lie, God. You are never lie to anybody. You are the God of liberty. At this moment, God, as a service of you, I speak peace and joy and love, God. God, I speak deliverance, God. The spirit of fear I cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak love. I speak peace in the name of Jesus, God. God, you give us power and authority. God, I use the authority that you, you, you just give me and everybody who believe you. You say in the name of Jesus, we have a power to cast every demonic activity in the name of Jesus, God. At this moment, moment. God, we, we ask the power of the Holy Spirit to visit everybody's spirit, God. The spirit of delay, I cast you in the name of Jesus, God. God, we want to glow knowing you are our Father. Knowing that everything we need is in your altar, God. Let us, let us have a time for you, God, so you can continue ministry in our soul, God. Thank you, Spirit of God. As a time by, we are going to receive the word of God. Everything, God, we ask you to ash our inner heart. That nobody know. You are the God, you know, our secret place. Where our friend, our spouse, or anybody don't know. You are the one, you know, inner chamber of our life. Let us open our heart and receive every detail that you want us to, to receive this morning. So when we leave this house, God, we have enough to sustain in our life spirituality, God. Though we are living by physical world, but there is a battle on the spirit that we cannot fight ourselves. That's why we are here to receive from you, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we believe. Amen. We should have our scripture reading by Miss Toya. Scripture reading, 1 John 3, 1 through 10. See what great love, <coughs> excuse me, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we shall be called children of God, and that what we are, the reason the world does not know, the, the reason the world does not know us is that they <coughs> did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not been yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. But we shall see him as he, see, as he is. All who have the hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so he, he might take away our sins and in him is no sin no one who lives in him keeps on sinning no one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him dear children do not let anyone lead you astray the one who does what is right is righteous is righteous just as he is righteous the one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning for the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God 
will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. <clears throat> they cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who is the children of the who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. Thank you. Thank you, Tori. Come on aboard. Work for the Lord. Sermon induction song. We're going into the summit induction song. <laughs>
has cast out my enemies. And we're going through the sermon, tied it in the scripture, children of God, 1 John 3, verse 10, verse, uh, with that pastor, Dr. Novella Springer. Too many dangers, toils, and snares we have already come. It's grace that brought us safe thus far, and grace that will lead us home. We're walking by the hands of God. No weapon can form, and we cancel all the plans of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, no God, we bring everyone here before you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the way your Holy Spirit presence has been with us today. And we cancel everything that's not of you in the name of Jesus. We bring every spirit into subjection to the name of Jesus. Right here, right now. All the equipment is going to work as it's supposed to in the name of Jesus. And we pray that your word will go forth with power. That everyone under the sound of our voices will come to know you more. And there will be all of you and none of me in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And as the scripture was beautifully read and by Miss Toya Latoya, and we thank God for the title that was given by uh, Miss Catty. Our topic is Children of God. And I'm only speaking on the first three verses of the scripture. And the book of 1 John was written by John the Apostle. He was a fisherman when God called him. And he immediately left everything behind to follow Jesus. John wrote the Gospel of John, 1st and 2nd John and 3rd John, and also the book of Revelation. John was an unlearned fisherman. And his writing is said to be very simple Greek, but the depth of his writing, because he wanted to know God, he is known as the disciple whom Jesus loved, because he spent all his time in the bosom of Jesus. And uh, this book doesn't tell us who wrote it, but the early church fathers like uh, Origen and Clement and Irenus all said that the Apostle and John wrote it. And it was circulated to the church in Asia Minor. Asia Minor is where the country of Turkey is today. And it was written because false teachers had come into the church. They were high, they were full of pride, and they didn't show any love. They said Jesus was not the Son of God, and he could not have come in flesh. And they were, you know, we have them all over the world today. All these experts who know everything about everything. And so John wrote this letter specifically against this form of heresy. And he starts off by saying, in this passage we're looking at, see what great love the Father has lavished on us. And John is basically saying, stop, look, I'm talking about great love. I want you to look on this with awe and wonder. Because God has given us this love. And he says it's great love. He's pouring it out on us. He's not stingily giving us a little bit at a time. And this is great love. Behold, look at it. This is the same John who wrote what is probably the most popular verse in the entire Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we hear the songwriter Chris saying, amazing love. How can it be that you, my king, could die for me? This kind of love that we are talking about is not a love that you get bored with and you stop talking about. You have to think about it at all time. Because it's a love that doesn't have any limit. That you can't exceed and it's a love that is not given by someone who's on the same level with us. It's not my mother's love. It's not my brother's love. It's the love from the King of kings and Lord of lords. It's from Jesus. 
It's from the one who is I am that I am. Adonai, Elohim, El Shaddai. The one who said let there be and call forth the world out of nothing. He's the one who's loving on us. And how did he love on us? He came to this earth to die for our sin. For the sin of the world. You know, Jesus left the splendor of heaven knowing his destiny. I always talk about this uh, because it really struck me. If I had known something about some of the places I've been, I would not have gone. There's no way you could have get me to go down there. If I had known that being friends with certain people or aligning with certain would lead to the kind of destruction that came my way, there's no way you could have seen me those people. But Jesus left the splendor of heaven knowing that things were going to go bad for him. Knowing that he was going to be crucified. Knowing that people are going to laugh at him and mock him and spit on him. And he came nonetheless. You know, from, in fact, he asked to come. From the foundation of the earth, uh, Jesus said, Father, prepare me a body so that I can go down and die for Adam's fallen race. You know, Adam sinned. Adam and Eve sinned. They used to walk with God in the cool of the day. And they listened to Satan who said, don't take him on. Just eat this apple. You ain't going to really die. You're going to get to know more. You have to be careful when people giving you advice and telling you things. And actually, one of the things you should always check is if they're doing it themselves. If it's such a good idea, how come they're not doing it? You know, double check the advice you get. Um, Warren Buffett is the richest, one of the richest men in the world, in the top four. And he said, don't do nothing, anything with anybody. If they're telling you put in 10,000, ask them where is their 10,000. Because if it's such a good idea, how come they're not putting their 10,000, but they want you to put your 10,000? You know, so just be careful. Satan had nothing to lose. Don't do business with people who have nothing to lose. Don't take advice from people who have nothing to lose. Satan was looking for a company, as we say, for people to join him in being outside of God's favor. And as a result, they listened to Satan and lost fellowship with God. They were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And they had to work. And we've been in sorrow ever since, you know. God looked down on the Jews. And he allowed them to have fellowship with him. But in order to have that fellowship, every year on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, they had to sacrifice a spotless lamb. And having sacrificed this lamb, they would also let go a goat in the wilderness that would carry the sins of the people. Up to today, the Jews consider that day the most precious day of the year, the day of atonement, Yom Kippur. Because it's a day that gives them back fellowship with God, according to the Old Testament law. And so, God, Jesus, we were shut out as Gentiles. We had no fellowship with God. We were condemned to be slaves to sin. Ah, oh, but God looked on us. And he didn't look on us when we were looking good and smelling good. He looked on us when we were dead in trespasses and sin. And he showed love. He said, Father, prepare me a body. I'm going to go down and die for Adam's fallen race. And God sent his only son. Ah, he didn't send an angel. He didn't just pick up anybody. He sent his only son. Ah, he didn't have spears of children so he could have picked up one and said, well, now all is over, I'm going to have some left. He just had one child. And he said, I'm going to give them the very best that I have. And so Jesus came in the form of human flesh, the spotless lamb of God. And he was offered up to be shed for the sins of the world. And Jesus, as he was leading this earth, he said, greater love has no man than this. 
than to lay down a life for one's friend. There is no greater love. We sing that song and we say they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. It was for you and me he died. This is matchless love. Oh, we find the songwriter saying the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. Oh, we sing, could we with ink the ocean fill? And what the sky, was it like paper that you could write? Even if we wrote forever about the love of God, we still couldn't get it said right. Love is what everyone is looking for. Love is the premium quality of life. Every movie you watch, everything you watch, they talk about love. Ah, oh, we even sing songs, I want to know what love is. But the only love that is of any value is the love that comes from Jesus. Ah, oh, we've been looking, so many of us, I've been there, looking for love in all the wrong places. All the people say, I love you, I'm going to stay with you. And when you look around, you can't find them, they've gone they disappeared but Jesus gave us real love ah Jesus gave of his very best he came and Isaiah said he was despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and he gave his very best he didn't say this is too much I'm only going to do this much he gave his all and that's what it's all about as a that's why John is saying, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. Look on it. Imagine about it. Think about it. Ah, this is real love. If you've never known love in your lives, we can know that we are love. Ah, some of us, not everybody has the love of a mother and father. Not everybody was welcome into this world. But it doesn't matter who we are. God's so love. Jesus so love that he came and walked among men so that we could be called children of God. Children of God. That's what it's all about. After Jesus was resurrected and he met up with the woman and all first Mary Magdalene, he said to them, go and tell my brethren, come and meet me down in Galilee. Uh, he was calling them brothers. Oh, if you read the scripture, before he said, I don't call you servants anymore. I'm calling you friend. But when he was roll, roll, risen up with resurrection power from the grave, when it was finished, when the price had been paid, we're not no longer servants or friends. We are brothers and sisters with God. We are part of God's family man's redemption has been paid go and tell uh, my brethren the apostle Paul says as long as we are led by the spirit of God we are children of God and as children of God we are ears and joint ears with Jesus we are Jesus' brothers and sisters ah, I'm a new creation I'm a brand new man all things are passed away I'm born again we have rights and privileges as the children of God. You must look at it from a human standpoint. It's as though the king of England was passing on a road and he saw a child homeless abandoned and he said I'm going to make that child to be a prince. I'm going to adopt him. I'm going to give him the privilege of royalty. I'm going to welcome him into my castle and my palace and that's what Jesus did. He gave us all the rights and it's far superior to that because we are brothers and sisters with the God who created the universe the maker of heaven and earth and we hold the name of Jesus in our possession all power is in that name there is no other name I don't care what name they call in the only name that has power is Jesus at the name of Jesus demons got to tremble and run they get up and run out of here at the name of 
of Jesus, sickness goes away. At the name of Jesus, the storms in our life, either we are kept safe in the middle of the storm or the storm comes to settle down. At the name of Jesus, all the weapons that's going to form against us, they're not going to prosper. In the name of Jesus, we're coming out victorious. We're already victorious. We're more than conquerors. The bills have been paid. The debts have been cancelled. Our children and our grandchildren and everyone in the name of Jesus is going to be who God wants them to be because we have the name of Jesus and God gave us an assignment and he gave us the power to do it he said ah when he was leaving he says all the power is given unto me in heaven and in earth all power anybody else who acting like they have power they are only pretending all power is given unto Jesus that means you are I, as long as God is with us, we have the majority. Ah, they could pull up in front of our house. It could be hundreds of people. Ah, it could be thousands of people. As long as we have Jesus, no weapon that is formed against us. If the weapon's going to form, because people are crazy, but the weapon is not going to prosper. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, we're coming out and nobody who put their hand against us is able to deliver, deliver us to any evil because Jesus is on our side. And any tongue that rises up against us, we got to say that's not true. The Bible says we have to speak out and say whatever lies being told on us, that's not true. Don't keep quiet. Speak out. Say, you know, stand up and say it is not true because in the name of Jesus the lies are not going to hold. In the name of Jesus, all the negative things are cancelled. In the name of Jesus, we're coming out. I've seen it. Ah, he's given us beauty for ashes. The desert is blooming again. Oh, all the years that the canker worm has stolen is coming back. In the name of Jesus. And he told us to go and make disciples. Disciple means you want to be just like your master. That means you want to be everything that Jesus does and is. That's why Paul says, I want to know him. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. We don't just want the good times. We want the bad times as well. Because it's when we know Jesus, we have a testimony. If we don't see that God can deliver us in the time of trouble we will never have a testimony you don't get strong ah, just by lying down in your bed and eating you have to work out tribulations and temptations are the workouts that we do to come to know God and we are to teach people ah, I was told that when you want to really know a subject you have to study it well enough to teach it we cannot be disciples unless we are disciples. We can't teach unless we know. I cannot teach you to play basketball if I've never played the game. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. I cannot, we cannot teach others to be disciples unless we too are disciples. And that's what the only thing that Jesus, one of the two things Jesus said as be my disciple. Make disciples. That's what it's about. Everything else is like super, uh, just extra. And if it happens, it happens. And so we have to care about the world around us. We can't just say, oh, I've said the sinner's prayer on my way to heaven, and I don't care about anybody else. Uh, Jesus says the harvest is, is plentiful, but the laborers are few. He's calling all of us to go out and work for him, to tell others about the goodness of God. About how he wants to love them. Behold what manner of love. 
Oh, if you're looking for love, I've seen people in really bad relationships where they're getting cheated on, they get beat down, but they're not leaving because they imagine that that is love. But we know real love, the love of God, which is greater far, the love of God that cleans us up and make us into something. It could have been me. It could have been any of us. Buried in our grave. It could have been us uh, going crazy in an insane asylum. It could have been us in jail. But God's love, but for God's love and grace and mercy. That is why we are here today. He woke us up this morning and we are clothed in our right mind. We are looking good, smelling good. All because of the goodness of God. And Jesus John went on to say that the world didn't know Jesus and it's not going to know us. The world didn't know Jesus. I do not understand and matter lost why people like to say that God called us to be rich. It's nowhere in the Bible. Jesus came to earth as he was born to Mary and Joseph was given to him as his father. Mary and Joseph were so broke and so poor. It was the law that when you had a man child, uh, the first child was a boy, you were to take that child to the temple and dedicate that child to the Lord using a lamb. But God, all through the ages, that's why I don't believe in this, or everybody bring a $100 story, said there are some people who won't be able to afford a lamb. So if you can't afford a lamb, bring two pigeons or two doves. Because those only cost like a penny. And this is also when you read in the book of Luke. That when Mary took Jesus to the temple to be offered up. She took two doves. They didn't have any money. He came to, to be born to the poorest of the poor. He could have gone to Herod's palace. And have chariots and people running. But instead, he came among the very poor. And the very first thing that Jesus had to do as a baby was to get up and run for his life. He was a refugee. Herod decided that he was going to kill anybody who was two years and older. Because the wise men came to him and said, Who is he that is born king of the Jews? And Herod was like, I'm the only king, and if anybody else said there's king, I'm going to kill them. So he asked the wise men how long he had taken them to get there. And for two years, these wise men had been following a star to meet this child of prophecy. So Herod was killing all the children two years and under. And so in order to save his life, he had his mother and father were warned in a dream, go down into Egypt. And stay there until Herod is dead. That's how Jesus stayed alive. You know, we have, a, I know, and I, I am an immigrant, so I might see it differently. But the Jesus, Egypt didn't say, let's build a wall higher and stop anybody from coming. Otherwise, Jesus might have gotten caught up by, by um, Herod and killed. The Bible says we must welcome the stranger. Not everybody is a stranger in need, but there are people who are really in need and we must reach out to them. The next thing that I want you to look at to show you how Jesus came and he was nobody is we always talk about angels came to the shepherds and they came to worship him. You know, we talk about racial profiling, how if you're a black man, the police automatically, if you're black, they presume you're a criminal. Uh, shepherds were considered to be the worst of the worst. They were not even allowed to go into court to give witness or testimony because they were considered to be liars and thieves. They said their hand was sticky. As they pass in your house with the sheep, they might lift up something and keep walking with it as well. And that is who came to worship Jesus. Not the high priests and the elite and the rich. Angels came to shepherds. That's who came to. I want us to understand 
that Jesus didn't come to this earth as some important person, high and lifted up. And uh, he came so that anyone could relate to him and say, just like me, Jesus came in this world and he didn't have anything. Ah, he wasn't rich or important. The son of God. This year, my mother told me something that made me cry. Because she's pregnant with me at 15. And she said she didn't have any clothes, baby clothes for me. And somebody donated the baby clothes. Otherwise, I don't know what I would have worn as a child when I was born. And so I'm glad to know that the king of heaven also was born in a manger among animals. That's who he came. That's who, so I can relate. We can all relate. It doesn't matter what we don't have. Jesus never owned anything. Every day of his life, he had to figure out where he was going to sleep tonight. He never owned a house. He never rented a house. As he ministered, healing the sick, raising the dead, and some very rich people were with him. He didn't say, let me collect some money here and build a nice house for myself because I have done a lot and I'm important. He still walked the earth. He walked everywhere. He didn't have horses and chariots. And so this is what John is saying, that the world hated him. They despise him. Ah, we are just nobody. That's our goal. The world says, make a name for yourself. Be like Beyonce and Taylor Swift and get known. But we want to be like Jesus. We are just nobodies trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. It does, they don't have to remember our names. We don't want them to remember our names. They need to know the only name that matters. And his name is Jesus. And Paul, you know, when I was a child, and I don't even know why, this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible, and I just keep saying it over and over again. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Ah, in this very short letter, six times, John says, Beloved, I'm loved. We are loved. We are loved by the hands of the man from Galilee. Yes, Jesus loves us. And he says, we are children of God. So many people don't want to be seen with us. Might not want to be affiliated with us. But God loves us. And he says we are his children. He even says that sometimes a mother might forget about the baby. And those of us, all of us who are mothers know that's really hard to do. When you have carried a child for nine months and given birth, it's hard to forget about that child. But Jesus is saying that my love surpasses that love of a mother. And this is no greater love. I talk a lot, uh, and they're not necessarily following Jesus. But Madonna, I always talk about. I am 59 years old. In my 20s, Madonna was the Taylor Swift and the Beyonce of my, of my youth. Today, the only artist who attracts a bigger crowd than Madonna is Taylor Swift. Forty something years later. And you, I believe this is why. The Bible says that if you give to the poor, you lend to God. And God doesn't owe anybody. Every year, 
Madonna spends millions of dollars working with orphans and abandoned children in the African nation of Malawi. She built the first and only hospital for children and for surgery for children using her own money. And as a result, I am convinced of it. That is why she is still at the top of the field 40 something years later. Not only that, Madonna has adopted not one, not two, but four children herself from that nation. In her 60s, she adopted another two because she said she was lonely and the house was empty. These, pe these children who their mothers left them and didn't want anything to do with them, Madonna picked them up and brought them to live a life that we can only imagine. And that is what God is saying to us. I'm picking you up. I don't care what they have said over you. I don't care how they've prophesied death over you. I'm making you my child. You're going to walk in newness of life. You're going to experience, he said, far above everything, exceedingly abundantly above everything that we could ask or think. God is going to lead us into a new season, into a new way of living. And it says we have this hope in us, so we have to live pure. Right here now, Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, we're going to be exactly like him. Right now we're working on it. And what is pure religion? The Bible says to help the orphans and the widows. People who have been left poor, not because of anything that they have done. Orphans, their mother and father died. Widows, their husband died. And in those days, women couldn't get a job easily. And that's what James said. This is what it means to live pure for God, to care about other people. And we have to obey Jesus' commands. And basically, Jesus has three commands. Love the Lord thy God. Love your neighbor as yourself. And love those who are of the family of God, just as Jesus said to love us. Uh, love your neighbor as yourself. I see this a lot in the church. We're so righteous. Love the neighbor who don't look like you, who don't smell like you. God, uh, it, this America first doctrine is not a Christ-like doctrine. God never put anything in the Bible about anybody being first. He said we are all one. And to summarize, we have a church down here and a church behind here. And we, and we went late today. Normally we finish by this time. To summarize. Let us remember that we are loved. In a world where everybody is talking love, let us remember that no one can truly love us unless they first love God. And anybody who is not showing God's love is not able and capable of love. And I know, we know, but we all the people know, you young people coming up will find that out. And I pray that you find the right people who are living for God as, we get, as you grow. And that you too will be people who are living for God, who will be touched. I, you know, I pray over all of us. I prophesy and I declare in the name of Jesus that you will have God-like relationships. That no devil from hell will come into your life to ruin your life in Jesus' name. I declare in the name of Jesus that you're going to grow up, you're going to have good education, you're going to have great jobs, all of our children, all that they're going to do well in the name. You will not be in trouble in the name of Jesus, that you will walk in victory, that you will own property, we will break the cycle. That we will own where we live. We're not going to always parent in Jesus' name. Nobody going to be able to evict us in the name of Jesus. We are not ever going to live like that. Again, I've lived there in the name of Jesus. 
Reposition is not going to be part of your life, of our lives in the name of Jesus. Because the love of God that is shed abroad in our heart is a practical love. And he cares about us in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father and our God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the fellowship and the gathering. Oh God, thank you for your love. Thank you because you keep on making a way for us where there seems to be no way. I pray that you'll send your angels to surround us, surround our family in Jesus' name. Keep us safe as we travel these dangerous highways. In your name, amen. A benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be glorious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Thank you for joining us.